In this lesson, you're going to learn about how to read contractions, to know whether you're having a progressive labor or not, and how to understand each contraction through seeing it as having five phases, and to understand that giving birth is actually doing the birth. It's an activity, it's not a noun. And how important it is for you to stay in the now and not future trip about what's happening next, or even really future trip about what's happening to or around you. And how important it is that you practice these skills. If they don't come second nature to you, you won't use them. You don't know what your birth's gonna be like. There's no way to know what your birth's gonna be like. And if you have a partner who can really help you, it makes a huge difference. And if you're on your own, then you just have to dig deeper. I birthed on my own in a strange hospital, and I used these skills. So I had to knuckle down and, and use them. So in the progression of labor, we had to know whether our labor was progressing. We didn't want to waste one contraction. What we found out was most women cope if the labor is between three hours and 18 hours. If it's shorter than three hours and intense, it's hard to cope because the contractions are very intense and very close together and you can't get a breath. If it lasts longer than 18 hours, that's not a progressive labor. That's a slow labor. If you only have to get to 10 centimeters, at some point, you don't want to be 18 hours in labor. We also address how the cervix dilates for many women, which is 30% of women have progressing labors, but they do not dilate until the last few hours of birth. I was one of them. I just didn't dilate, didn't dilate, but my contractions were changing every hour or two. And that's how you know that your labor is progressing, is that you feel it's changing and your partner and others can see and feel the contractions get longer, stronger, and often more intense. If you feel you've been in labor for hours and hours with no change, you're right. You are, so you need to have it progressing, but you need to learn to read the contractions. And who's sending you the messages? Your baby's sending you the message. If you're tight inside and your baby can't get through that tension, the contractions are gonna be slower. If you're bent in a way that bends the baby in a way it doesn't like, your contractions will be slower. If you're compressing the inside space of your baby and you, the labor doesn't progress, it's because you're compressing the inside space. And that's why things like pressure on your back for back labor may relieve your back labor, but it compresses your baby's space and your baby's trying to move out the sacrum. And that's why in the body work you learned how to move the sacrum. So it all ties in together, these complicated set of skills. We also often heard ourselves saying, well, when the contractions weren't too painful, I coped, and then they got really painful, and then I stopped coping. Men were very important to this. They could see that there were five phases. The contractions started, it went up, it peaked, it went away, and it stopped. So we developed ways that use skills in each of those five phases, and that's important. You might not be able to stay in control of the contractions peaking, but you can set up the skills as it's starting. You can work with the skills as it's getting more intense. So forget it. Scream when it's peaking, but get it back together again afterwards and get it back together again when the contractions are gone. And this is where your partner is so very good because they will remind you and stay in your face and keep you managing, coping, dealing with, handling, working through, staying on top of and feeling in control. That's the goal. And getting your baby out. You don't want to be in labor any longer than you need to be. We also really had to get focused on the fact that birth is not a noun. It's your baby's birth. You're doing the work of birthing your baby. Use skills to do that. It's really important. Then once your baby is born, you feel that you've moved from being skilled to being able to develop skills or use your skills with a newborn. Staying in the now was very, very important because women cope in the early part of labor when it's not too intense. And then when it gets more intense, they start to future trip or they start to basically shut down because they feel overwhelmed and they lack skills. There are tricks to staying in the now. And in this handout, you'll learn some of those tricks. The last handout in this section is practice. 
You can't rub these skills on your body and use them. They have to be second nature, but we can't practice birth before it happens. So it becomes very complicated. That's why we learned and why we're passing on to you, use the skills while you're doing other things. While I'm sitting here, I can soften inside my pelvis. I can make certain that those sit bones are far enough apart that a baby could come out of them. And your partner can do the same thing. The only things you can't practice doing other things are the videos of the body work or the internal work. However, you can read a book while you're having the internal work done. <laughs> so it's really important to practice. You want to know that you will use these skills. Both of you do. The other thing that's really, really important, use your skills towards the end of your pregnancy and as your labor starts. Don't wait until it becomes complicated or hard to deal with. You want to develop and use the skills right away. Just use them and you will deepen using them as the labor progresses. If you have a non-laboring cesarean, the best thing to do is the day before your surgery, really go through the skills that you, the two of you have learned together, work together with the skills, and then see your labor as driving to the hospital. That's what you're doing. You are in labor. Use your relaxation and breathing skills. Work through your baby's birth journey with it. When you're being prepped, that's your transition. Sometimes that's uncomfortable. Deepen your skills. If you're separated from your partner, know that he or she is using the skills in another room and that you are using the skills. And when you come back together for the surgery, use your skills together. Work through your baby's birth journey. You won't feel alienated and you won't feel passive and you won't feel surreal.